highlighting some of the success stories of supporting young people in the international agricultural research. So a particular focus on getting people involved in international agricultural research in all sorts of dimensions, in communication, in science, in extension, uh, in, in policy, and trying to get people who, who are excited about international agricultural research and support them. So I guess it just shows, in my very, very short career, the breadth of um, fields that you can cover in international agricultural research. And then also for those of you who haven't yet worked or had any experience in international agricultural research, for me, um, and I know for a lot of other people, volunteering has been what opens the door um, to get into this field. And it's really exciting and you get to go and work in all these wonderful places. So it's all about uh, applying uh, and developing the most cutting edge technologies uh, to give us that edge in the cultivars that the farmers are growing. I put forward a proposal to deliver this bee breeding technology uh, to developing countries in Africa. And it was a real surreal feeling doing this because you know, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking and remembering about how I was digging through the garbage bin to find bits of plastic to build my first inoculation chamber and people telling me I couldn't, I couldn't do this and it wasn't possible. In international uh, agricultural research and, 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 and in this space, hitting the international stage, it's not easy, it's a lot of work, but it's so rewarding and it fuels me. It's like having a thousand copies at once uh, going <laughs> through your veins. And uh, I wake up every morning like excited to go to work and, and the students would <laughs> would agree with me, and uh, it, it's more than a job, it's, it's a passion. I applied and I was successful, so I went off to Samanakan and I lived in Laos for just over six months where I was working with the Provincial Ag and Forestry team. Professionally, I learned a lot about smallholder market systems and how you run research in a developing country, and I also learned a lot about what knowledge gaps I had to fill if I wanted to have a career in international research. Growers, and one of the things that we really focused on was developing technical fact sheets in Pasalau. There's no information out there for staff or local growers in their own language. And he told us that he had come along to our grower field day, and before the field day, he hadn't been able to grow any brassicas. He had had a nasty little grub that had been snipping his seedlings off at the base. As part of our field day, we targeted key pests in the area and the trainers provided some really good management tools that were cost effective and sustainable for farmers to use. And this guy had taken this on board and he had this nice big plot of cauliflowers growing. And that, for our team, was the most satisfying thing that we could have got as feedback from what we'd been working towards. We are also involved um, in the volunteer program, uh, which places young people in projects overseas, both in communication and research and training positions. What it comes down to is I was lucky enough to apply for a young scholar um, spot at the Crawford Conference in Canberra in 2012. And from there, it led me to come on to the different seminar series here and now. I've come back from a wonderful experience that was probably one of the best things I've done and career-wise it is definitely the best thing that I've done. So the volunteer position not only led to my PhD position but meant I had the background um, to really do this research. So I had the language, an idea about how to run research in a developing country um, and I also had the patience and understand how things work. So they're all really valuable skills that I could bring to my PhD. Not only was I uh, working while I was there, but I also got to spend a lot of time going to Barsi's, weddings, and many, many festivals. While the project was really successful in its own right, the research results were only a small part of what I took away from the experience. We 
also hope that through our training of agricultural researchers in developing countries, um, in communications, which is something new that we're doing, uh, you'll hear more about, um, and they'll be better at talking about what they're doing in their projects and the impact that their work has. We actually encourage scientists, researchers, because at the end of the day, we love hearing it from the people who do it. It's genuine that way. We don't want people spinning PR and that. We want to hear it from real people. Get out there, talk about it, share your stories. You might not think it's interesting pipetting or uh, setting up agar plates all day, but it is. There are people out there who are interested in this stuff. But the exposure that I had very early in my career meant that um, people noticed and wanted to collaborate and so I, I actually uh, opened the door to a lot of opportunities uh, from China, other, uh, overseas in the US um, and people began contacting me. You've got a really, really good story to tell and I bet you you do. You really do have good stories to tell. Particularly if you do go overseas, I encourage you to do one of these things because the relationships that you're going to form over there, the networks and the stories that you'll be able to bring home not only great for yourself, but they encourage the next wave of researchers coming through. Now we want to hear what you're doing, and I'd be telling everybody here what you're doing, because you never know where it will lead you.